Yeah, so maybe tune it up a bit. I'd, I'd recommend you tune it to this falling piano. I don't understand what you're talking about. You can't tune an accordion. It's a fixed reed type of instrument. And there's no reason at all to... I'd say he's perfectly in tune now. Tight as a drum, Mr. Keynes. Hello, friends, and welcome in to this, the 177th edition of Fusebox, derisively entitled uh, Disaccordion. Yeah, Disaccordion over here, not that accordion over there. <laughs> I'm so glad you got that out of the way, Mr. Keynes. It was hanging around there like overly ripe fruit. <laughs> <laughs> for which I am eternally grateful. Yes, friends, uh, I'm your playing for change, but in the wrong key. Host Mark Rosen over there, sitting smack dab in the center of it all, the maestro of meters, Milt Keynes, everybody. Well, thank you kindly. I'm uh, sensing a musical thread to this show. Yeah? Yes, Mr. Keynes, you're absolutely wrong. Our... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> our, uh, our title is a sort of odd play on words combining disaccord, of course meaning a disagreement, with accordion to create the most horrendously dissonant instrument you have ever heard. the blast. Now, I, I got to say, this this whole idea for this show got uh, suggested really by our current state of affairs regarding uh, health information and how it's being uh, perceived and, uh, and to another extent, how it's being misinterpreted and in uh, some extreme cases, actually reinvented to be a complete lie later on. Well, there is uh, there's just some uh, pretty confusing info out there right now. Yeah. Yeah. But you know what? In the proper perspective, it becomes very, very clear and not really random at all. Does uh, that clarity involve the use of mushrooms of any variety? Uh, no. No, we're, we're not requiring the uh, use of psychotropic plants of any description to uh, perceive this truth in this example, Mr. Keynes. But we will get to uh, all of that shortly. All righty. You know, it is the nature of our show, uh, <laughs> and maybe even our times, it would appear, that we go from uh, the uh, esoteric notions of someone like Terence McKenna in our last show that uh, discussed the human potential and nature of our universe, that we go from that to the human grub worm in a leisure suit playing governor in that state. Yeah, down there, in that area. You know, I gotta say, this guy DeSantis is becoming the poster boy for the idea that the Republicans seem to have lost any sense of conscience, if they ever had one. Well, we know many of them have clearly lost their minds. But an alarming decision by the aforementioned governor has signed an executive order prohibiting school districts from requiring staff and students to wear masks. Quoting the Gov here, The federal government has no right to tell parents that in order for their kids to attend school in person, they must be forced to wear a mask all day, every day. Unfortunately for the governor... The federal government does have a mandated responsibility to keep its citizens safe. It does indeed, Mr. Keynes, because, you know, there's already mandates in place. In many places, you can't even get into school without various, say it with me, vaccinations. Now, you can always select to be a selfish idiot at any time, regardless 
of governmental policies, as has been demonstrated over and over and one more over again down there in the Sunshine State. Now, some may think this uh, mask thing is uh, an abridgment of their rights, you know? So my question is, uh, do you drive much? Every time you get into that car, you put on a safety belt. That's mandated. That's the law. Why? For the potential inconvenience of an accident occurring. Yeah, but what if it wrinkles my shirt? Exactly. You know, because it's always smarter to be a well-dressed corpse. The little thing that, that, that many folks seem to forget, and this is where the uh, selfish part of our scenario begins, friends. The mask is to protect you, for sure. But more to the point, it's there to stop the spreading of the virus to others. Hey, why in hell are we having to explain this to these toe-headed clowns? It, it, isn't it obvious? No. No. See, because many believe the ghost of Hugo Chavez rigged the past election. It... It's really hard to communicate common sense to a person who also believes that the January 6th insurrection was really just an altercation, as Senator Kevin McCarthy calls it. It's a complete bizarro world on that side of the aisle lately, and uh, seems to be on a hair-on-fire mission to cartoonerize itself quickly. Well, Florida is in the new uh, epicenter of this recent virus infection. It's, it's got like uh, one-fifth of all the new cases. Well, I, 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 the thing that just seems uh, to keep resonating for me is the fact that the governor's alleged concern for the uh, sanctity of civil rights and all that is poot. It's money, friends. Florida is a tourist state. If you don't have tourists... And bad flamingo bars serving sand-infused cocktails, then there's really nothing happening. And at that point, the whole financial infrastructure sort of just falls over. Well, of course, the whole impact on businesses everywhere has sucked, bro. Of course it has. And who knows that better than us, right? <laughs> but my point is wrapping yourself in the flag and saying that you're standing up for the people's right to choose is a bag of pig wind. Yeah, as long as they don't choose Democrat or reproductive rights. You can have any color you want, as long as it's green. Yeah, yeah and we've got more on this idea coming up in a reset flash. You know, this is really a terrible disappointment to me. The show for everybody, but not everybody will like it. TheFuseBoxShow.com So here's the thing. 31% of Republicans say they will not ever get vaccinated. And you know, that's just fine by me. <laughs> you can... <laughs> <laughs> you can stack them up over there. It's fine. We can dig a big hole. Uh, I'm not surprised by that number, actually. It's the crazy one-third thing, right? I, I have always uh, uh, attributed the quote that uh, 96% of everything is crap to writer Theodore Sturgeon, hence Sturgeon's Law. But you know what? It, it actually might be somebody else. <laughs> I just like the ring of it. But anyway, in the spirit of, allegedly, Mr. Sturgeon's brilliant observation, may I add that uh, evidently, now, one-third of anything appears to be completely pinwheel-eyed crazy. Yeah, in fairness, there, there may be a few folks out there who don't want to get vaccinated because uh, of other reasons, you know, uh, maybe health-related or something. Oh, certainly. There are folks with uh, immune system sensitivities that are frankly... Uh, advise strongly to not do this because of the seriousness of their condition. By the way, we're not talking about those people. No, we're talking about the folks that are 100% positive that Jewish-owned space lasers were to blame for starting random forest fires and that microchips are being inserted into the vaccines to, uh, 
To, uh, to, to, to do what, exactly? I... Make you go to Wendy's instead of Burger King. Oh, of course, yeah. So with the governor's uh, see-no-evil, wear-no-mask stance, Florida gets a big hit again. This time because of the Delta virus variant that hospitals are seeing. Uh, uh, now they're seeing like huge amounts of cases in, in uh, younger and typically more healthy people prior to getting uh, infected. And it's filling them up fast, friends. Seems to be highest in the uh, unvaccinated. Well, you probably have to have it present that way. Or your vaccinations aren't doing the job on these mutations, which might also be a case because we've seen uh, an uptick as well in breakthrough cases. Which, if we're rational about this, we're not saying farewell to this virus for a uh, potentially very, very long time, as it will continue to mutate. It is uh, their want to do that, you know. The good news is that as uh, people develop baseline immunities, the symptoms will become less severe. And uh, at some point, it'll just become like the rest of the viri that are uh, swimming around us daily. Uh, They just become mild or asymptomatic for many of us. And uh, we develop immune responses. Well, and that just brings up this point. There's a lot of confusion out there. Frankly, doesn't need to be. No, it doesn't. The the fact is that science and medicine, (laughs) frankly, are only as effective as their tools are to measure something. Right? So, uh... As the measurement tools detect a change in the virus, the medical authorities have to react accordingly. Or as the director of the NIH, Francis Collins, says, If you're in the stock market and your stockbrokers told you last week to buy and this week to sell, you don't say, oh, you're a flip-flopper, make up your mind. You say, okay, what's happened here? What are the economic conditions that would cause that to change? That's what's happening with public health. So give the public health people a break. They're trying to look at the current circumstance, do the best they can with a cloudy crystal ball and tell you what makes the most sense to save lives. And to have that turned into one more reason for political criticisms is just not helping at all. You know, that's the first time a reason for all this has made sense to me. Right? I mean, you're going to have to respond as you learn things. This this really isn't the case of a virus that's been hanging out here for 50 years and we kind of know its severity levels and courses of action to take. This this kind of, uh, this is a lot like a boxing match. You're ducking and jabbing as you figure out your opponent and what are his patterns and fatigue points and blind spots. And Yeah, personally, I'd like to take the thing out in the second round. Well, indeed. We just need to get through this thing without making... Another large step forward and then six steps backwards like we've been doing. There will be course corrections on this thing. There have to be. It's kind of easy to see how this misinformation or even just mucking up the message gets started. It's all knee-jerk stuff, you know? Hey, you said wear a mask, and now you're saying not to. What are you trying to get away with? Are you taking my howitzer away from me? It's crazy. And you know what? And seriously, we really do need to take a closer look at that Second Amendment thing. I mean, it's been so grossly misinterpreted that it's almost unrecognizable in its uh, original message. Well, maybe they should use guns against the virus thing. Well, it would certainly solve that uh, one third problem, Mr. Keynes. And uh, speaking of brain eating parasites, clearly the uh, victims of such thing held a rally back on July 10th in Tallahassee, Florida, to, quote, free our patriots in tally. Saw what they did there. Kind of wish I hadn't. Very creative. Uh, Just an aside here. You know that uh, around this great country of ours, there are people who take umbrage with a person that gets clever with the city or maybe even state's name. My hometown, for instance, uh, San Francisco. People have been skinned and then pickled in brine for shortening the name to, here it comes, Frisco. Frisco rhymes with Crisco. And Frisco is in Texas, 
and I'm sure that they don't want to be confused with the West Coast variant. Now, would that be the Omega variant or the Gamma variant? Neither. It's a Disaccordian. Uh, you have to clean that up. Uh, so a uh, chap named Luis Miguel, a Republican candidate for the Florida Senate, who is attempting to primary current Senator Marco Rubio, has a uh, thing or nine to say about this insurrection thing. Quoting uh, Miguel, Folks, the patriots who have been hunted down by the corrupt communist FBI are suffering. Many of them are veterans who fought for this nation. Let's do our part to ensure that they're liberated. We can't allow this in America, he said in a tweet. So this uh, Miguel guy has a uh, head of steam for all of the alternative facts put out by the extreme nut jobs in the GOP lately. Now, uh, by extreme... Do you, in fact, mean all of them? (laughs) Sadly, it's getting to look more and more like that, Mr. Keynes. Uh, The level thinkers in that party are now less in number than the vitriolic froth spewers we see here. Uh, Miguel seems to tweet almost incessantly about uh, conspiracies uh, from his little Tweety Bird account there. He's accused Rubio (laughs) of getting a vaccine and voting to certify the 2020 election result. (laughs) Yeah, what was Rubio thinking? (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. Miguel also claims that the uh, deadly January 6th insurrection that resulted in five deaths, including a police officer, was in fact a, quote, false flag carried out by a corrupt FBI to distract from the election theft and target conservatives. But, you know, as it might uh, not surprise you, he's not alone. Of course not. Stupidity loves company. Yeah. Well, enter Tampa Bay Republican and two-time congressional failure. Christine Quinn has also publicly stated that she, too, will attend the event. Quoting, Join me to support our patriots that have been unlawfully arrested and detained without due cause. (laughs) Uh, She posted this to her Instagram account. Uh, Like her compatriot, Miguel, Quinn has consistently denied that Joe Biden won the 2020 election, and she also continues to deny (laughs) that she lost her own election to District 14 Congresswoman Kathy Castor, who won more than 60% of the votes. Yeah, pay pay no attention to those numbers. Uh, They're all fake. Fake voters uh, put there by the rotting ghost corpse of Hugo Chavez and uh, and, and George Soros, uh, B- B- Benghazi, uh, emails. <laughs> yes, exactly. I, well, and, uh, and and since you mentioned Benghazi there, you know, it, it, it just came up in a recent stat that they had over 32 congressional hearings on that thing. And uh, this uh, insurrection. Yeah, they don't even want one to occur. Yeah. So uh, that dead horse is as stinky as the other dead horse that they were riding in on. Oh, and um, by the way, after providing zero evidence of fraud in her failed election. Naturally. Well, since then, she uh, dropped that lawsuit contesting her election results, but uh, says she will run again, by gosh, in uh, 2024. Oh, coincidentally... She's still suing local Trump supporters for stiffing her with all the travel expenses for the U.S. Capitol on January 6th. (laughs) Where have we heard that tactic before? (laughs) Has that orange moron ever paid for any of his rallies? It's a good question, Mr. Keynes. You know, I know in some states, uh, El Paso, Texas, uh, as an example... They were left holding a bunch of unpaid bills for venue rental and security, uh, police, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, I bet Trump just figured it should all be free, you know, to pay homage to his bigly huge greatness. Yeah, in tiny hands. Yeah. 
Meanwhile, the 2022 Democratic gubernatorial candidate Charlie Crist has called on DeSantis to publicly reject the conspiracy theory that Trump actually won the election and to investigate Florida's connection to the hate groups involved with January 6th. Quoting here, if Governor DeSantis can't admit the truth about something as simple as who the duly elected president is, is there anything he won't mislead the public about? Just as troubling, his silence is empowering the hate groups that fueled the insurrection of January 6th. Floridians deserve better. Well, to this point, uh, as we know, DeSantis has uh, done neither. Of course not. He's counting on that orange guy's support in spite of the truth or consequence. Or accountability, which seems to be uh, heating up. Or at least there are some waters beginning to slow boil. We've uh, seen in recent days uh, a rounding up of Trump organization cronies uh, all have something to lose. And uh, the various legal teams think something to share as well in terms of valuable information. I mean, hey, if there's smoke coming out of all the windows of this clown car, it's safe to say something's on fire in there. Burning clowns? Maybe. Sure smells like funny hair. It's just, I don't know, very unsettling to see a bunch of people either uh, manufacture false information or buy into what's now commonly known as the big lie without really doing a deep dive to uh, fact check the evidence and uh, more importantly, the source of that information first before just gleefully signing up for this rancid shell game. Yeah, I don't know. It just seems to me it's all about appealing to that bloated orange guy's base, hoping it will somehow turn into votes for these rat bastards. Careful, Mr. Kane. We have a very woke rat demographic who might take offense to that term, I'm just saying. Uh, I deny everything. I've never even been to Sheboygan. Uh, she, she said she was 18. Yes, thank you, Governor. Kindly exit through the gift shop. Oh, and please mind the falling piano. Oh, how the mighty have fallen. You know... So, uh, Governor uh, Cuomo of uh, the fine state of New York there looks to have a uh, barge full of sexual harassment suits coming his way. Yeah, digging his heels in for sure. I mean, come on. When you have that many people come forward, like, what is it, 11? Yeah, yeah, 11. Uh, at this point, I mean, they're risking their careers to get the word out. Well then you got to think there's something to it. Yeah. It appears the shenanigans in the governor's office has uh, been known for a long time. A, quote, toxic atmosphere, it's been called in the legal filings. I think even President Biden has said he should resign. And you know what, bro? If this were the 1980s or even the late 90s, he would have left way before this. But because we have this weird, and I'll say it again, bizarre world culture right now where up is sideways and down is aardvark, it takes three times as long, or never in some cases, to get the thing wrangled out. Well, you know, that, that one story we've used to uh, illustrate that very point is the now clearly infamous instance where a uh, then presidential hopeful, Gary Hart was uh, photographed on a boat with a young lady, Donna Rice, merely sitting on his lap at the point there, yeah. But that turned into such a political hurricane for Mr. Hart that uh, he had to back out of his run for president back then in 1988. Well, there was that whole extramarital affair thing with Rice that uh, sort of tipped his boat over. (laughs) I saw what you did there. (laughs) Uh, Interesting sidebar, Mr. Keynes. Did you know that the reason Mr. Hart was a frontrunner in that 88 election was because the then frontrunner backed out? Who do you suppose that guy was? Hmm? I have no idea. Mario Cuomo. Holy carp. Well, uh, 
Nice bringing it all back home, bro. Oh, thank you, Mr. Keynes. Well, as you know, I am a trained professional. Please don't try this at home. And uh, with that bit of tangential continuitous, we will uh, call it a show and maybe a disaccordion. And take our discordant melodies and atonal motifs and squeeze back down into the rusting saxophone bell, but not before thanking our contributors to this edition of Fusebox, Aaron Lane and Jeff Pollard. Thanks as well to the always a bit sharp, but never, ever flat, Deacon of Dials over there, Milk Canes for technical assistance and so on and so forth. Pleasure is all. that subscribe button and give us a like and maybe a 200 star rating or whatever wherever you may have found us we're available on uh, apple podcasts stitcher iheart radio amazon google podcasts yes and the very unsug itself at on sug.com. Yeah, and if you want to really help us out, you can always take a visit to the Fuse Box store. How? Well, tell them, Eddie. Hey, it's as simple as pie. You go to thefusebockshow.com and click on the shopping tab. And like flipping magic, there you are. Oh, and if you're one of those book of face folks, click on the shop now button on the Fusebox Show Facebook page. Okay? Also, quick as a bunny. There you go. Enough said. Sincerely, friends, thanks so much for pushing play on this edition of the show. We do so appreciate that. You really could be doing anything right now. And and uh, that, what you're doing right there, yeah, you could go blind from doing that. Just saying. I have been your agitated by unseen forces host, Mark Rowe saying, uh, until our next cartoon. Did you know that masks are a fetish? 